Hi everyone, this is Learning with Linda, and today I bring the topic of stimulus happening this week and for the rest of the month of December. In this video, I bring you the topic of the child tax credit. As we all know, we, there's one last payment coming up, and we'll also be releasing information as to who will be receiving the $1,800 regarding the child tax credit this month. And for my friends in the state of California, this state is still sending stimulus checks, so I bring you more information regarding this topic. And finally, Finally, we're going to be including the states that are sending PEBT payments this month, so I highly recommend for you to stay until the end of this video to ensure that you receive this information. Now, before we get started, if you are interested in the latest news regarding stimulus, child tax credit, SNAP, PEBT, and everything in between, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Now let's get right to it. And if you're interested in learning on how to get cash back from your food stamps or any grocery shopping, make sure you check out this video, how to get cash back from your food stamps. Link will be in the video description. And don't forget about the Ibotta app where you can get cash back from your grocery shopping or any shopping in general. And don't forget about the $10 you can receive once you've downloaded the app, uploaded your first receipt using the referral code that is on the screen. There is also a $30 cashback opportunity with Rakuten. Once you spend $30 or more using the referral link that is on this screen. This promotion is only valid until the end of the year. That being said, it's until December 31st, so don't forget to take advantage of this offer. So the first stimulus coming to you guys this month is the child tax credit. We have the last payment of the CTC coming on December 15th and here are the additional details. The sixth and final potential final payment from the child tax credit program is set to hit U.S. parents' bank accounts on Wednesday, unless lawmakers renew the benefit under the Build Back Better Act, which include a one-year extension of the monthly payments. Parents of 61 million children won't receive additional monthly checks in the year 2022. The sixth payment will be deposited directly into the bank accounts of millions of parents on December 15th, although some families may receive the checks through the mail, which could add several days to delivery time. And just as a quick reminder, the bank deposit will be labeled child CTC, so just make sure you keep that in mind once you receive your payment and know that it's specifically, specifically for the child tax credit. As with previous checks, eligible families with children under the age of 6 will receive $300 per child, and with those with a child between the ages of 6 through 17 should expect to receive $250 per child. Now, for those who signed up more recently for the checks could see a bigger lump sum, which is a total of up to $1,800. And so if they miss the prior monthly payments and register for the payments before the November 15th cutoff to receive a payment before the end of the year. So once again, if you haven't received any monthly payments for the child tax credit, just know that you can receive a lump sum amount this coming December 15th. Now, I know there's been a little confusion regarding the $1,800 for the child tax credit. Let me provide you guys with a little more information regarding this. So yes, some families can expect to receive $1,800. However, it doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. So who is, who is it exactly that will be receiving the $1,800? So families who did not receive any previous monthly payments from the child tax credit, Families getting $1,800 payments per child are non-filers who used to get the uh, who used the getctc.org tool before the November 15th deadline. So once again, if you've been receiving monthly payments, just know that $1,800 is not in addition. It's only for those who didn't receive those monthly payments. Now, if you fail to use it in time. Unfortunately, you missed out and will have to wait until next year once you file your tax returns. So you'll still be able to claim your child tax credit money. However, there's a chance that if you didn't re uh, register on the tool, you may have to wait until next year once you file your taxes to get access to those uh, to that money for your child. Uh, now, those who were able to use it in time will get $1,800 for each child under the age of six and $1,500 for for kids aged 6 through 17 years of age. Now, since these families missed out on all other monthly installments from July to December, remember, 
the government was issuing monthly payments for the CTC, then they would get a one-time payment to make up for it. So this isn't money in addition to what the government has already been given out. This is simply for those who didn't receive any monthly payments and registered on the tool before the deadline. Also, don't forget that everyone claiming the tax credits this year will be able to claim the remaining half of their payments on their tax return. So that's when you should expect to receive um, the additional money for the child tax credit. And now moving on to the state of California. The state of California is still sending stimulus checks this month. Here are the additional details. So for those expecting to receive a check are in line for a payment between $500, $600, or $1,100 with the sum depending on your own personal circumstance. So if you're still waiting for a physical check, you are expected to receive your payment depending on the last three digits of your zip code on your 2020 tax return. So here are the time frames as to when you can expect to receive your check for the California stimulus. And once again, this is going to be based on the last three digits of your zip code. So if your zip code ends uh, from 376-2584, you can expect to receive your check between the week of November 15th and December 3rd. If the last three digits of your zip code are in 585 through 719, you can expect to receive your check once again between November 29th and December 17th and so forth. And now moving on to the topic of PEBT, we still have a couple of states that are sending payments this month. Also, remember guys, PEBT is only a one-time payment. It is not a monthly payment, so make sure you keep that in mind. So the first state that has already started sending payments as of November 29th is the, the state of Texas, sending $375 for summer PEBT. Next is also the state of Florida. This state has started sending payments on November 24th. Remember, it still could uh, happen anytime between the 24th all the way to about 30 days additional to that. Um, Colorado also started sending payments as of November 28th. It would be the $375 for summer PEBT. Next, we have the state of Georgia. Georgia is also sending PEBT for the school year 2020 through 2021 this month. On the list is also the state of Alabama. Alabama recently released the information that they have started sending payments as of December 8th, and we're talking about the $375 summer PEBT. Next is California that started sending those summer PEBT payments on December 15th, so they're gonna go ahead and start on that. Remember for this date, it's not, it's actually estimated dates. They're not official dates yet, so these dates can change at any time because it's just the state's decision. Um, also another um, questionable starting date is for the state of Nevada. Once again, their estimated starting date is December 15th and they'll also be releasing the $375 for summer PEBT. And don't forget guys that in order to receive PEBT, your child must have received free or reduced price meals under the National School Lunch Act if their schools were closed or operating with reduced hours or attendance for at least five consecutive days during the 2020 through 2021 school year. So the reason why it's called PEBT is because it's specifically because of the pandemic. So PEBT also provides benefits to younger children in households participating in the SNAP program whose covered childcare facility is closed or operating with reduced hours or attendance, or who live in the area of schools that are closed or operating with reduced hours or attendance. So there you have it, guys. These are the requirements to receive or to, uh, to qualify for those PEBT payments. Also, don't forget guys, the state of Texas is giving out $1,500 for kids with disabilities. And this is part of the SSES program and here I bring you the additional details. The Supplemental Special Education Services are giving out $1,500 one-time payments online grants for eligible parents or caregivers of eligible students served by special education that have been impacted by pandemic school closures. Families of eligible students can use the online accounts to obtain educational materials and resources and or services such as additional speech therapy 
or other specific services. So this can include anything from tutoring um, to behavioral services, um, any service that your child could benefit from uh, when they're in the Department of Special Education through the school or part of, you know, they have an un they're under an IEP, then this child could potentially qualify for these $1,500. So here is the student eligibility criteria. So to be eligible for the SSES grant, students must be enrolled in a Texas public school, enrolled in pre-K through 12th grade, and a student with a disability served through special education, meaning they must have an IEP in place. So most families will not be awarded an account until SSES has access to the newly appropriated funds from the legislature. This should be early January 2022. This also means that many applications won't be able to be processed until then. And that is all the updates that I have for today. Remember to turn on your notification button to know when I have uploaded a new video. See you next time.